eighth grade students, this is Mrs. Thompson, and we're going to talk about section 4.2, example one today. Hopefully you have your note packet out and ready. We're going to cover the first part of our objective, which is finding the X and Y intercepts from a graph and again from an equation. I'm going to show you some strategies for both. Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about definitions. The y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Now, I hope that really makes sense to you. If you have a line on your grid and it's crossing the y-axis, the very point where it crosses the y-axis is your y-intercept. And in this particular situation, x always equals zero. That's why the point is written as zero, comma, and whatever the number is on the y that your line is crossing. So the x-intercept would then be the opposite. That's the point where the line crosses the x-axis. And of course, y always is going to equal zero. So when you write this point, you're going to write whatever the value is on x that your line is crossing, and then zero is always going to be your y. All right, let's take a look at example one. We're going to find the x and y-intercepts first from the graph given in letter A and then from an equation in standard form in letter B. So let's take a look at letter A. Do you see the line that's on your graph? I'm going to highlight it right now so you can see it really, really good. Here we go. There's the highlighted line. And that's what I need to, you to focus on on your paper, okay? Now that line crisscrosses both the x-axis and the y-axis. Hopefully you remember that the x-axis is your horizontal axis and the y-axis is your vertical axis. All right, so let's take a look. I'm actually going to start with the y-intercept, I believe. And as you can see, it crosses the y-axis right where I have circled it. Okay, so what you need to do is find where the origin is and then count your way down and that's your y-intercept. So I'm going to write underneath your graph, I'm going to shorthand it, y-int, that just means y-intercept, and then we're going to write the name of that point, okay? So as you count down, here's the origin, and then we're going to count down, there's negative 1, there's negative 2, and voila, there's negative 3. So your y-intercept is negative 3. Now how do we write that as an actual point? Well, if you remember back up towards the top under the definitions, this is how we're going to write a y-intercept. You're always going to write zero for the x because you don't move on the x. You don't move left or right on the x. When you're at the origin, you stay on the origin. You don't move. That's why the first number is zero. You don't move on the x. And then we're down to negative three on the y. That's how you write the y-intercept in that particular point. All right, now let's focus on the x-intercept. I'm going to circle that. There it is. And I'm going to write underneath here x-intercept. Another little blank here. And we want to, again, start at the origin. And we're going to move on the x. So start here at the origin. And then we're going to go back. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And there's negative 4. So there's my x-intercept. Now how do I write that as an actual point? Well remember, we're going to, from up top, we're going to write whatever the number is for x that it is on the x-axis, in this case negative 4, we don't move up or down on the y, so we stay planted at 0 on the y, and that's how you write the actual name of the points for the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Okay, now if that didn't make any sense, why don't you rewind me and watch it again and see if you can pick it out. Hopefully you can easily discern uh, the x and y intercepts from a graph. Now it only works, graphs are only efficient if the x and y intercepts actually cross a grid intersection. If they don't, then we'll have to find another way to figure it out. The graph isn't the best way. All right, let's go to example B. Um, 3x minus 2y is equal to 12. That's standard form, so make a mental note as well as a physical note here out beside that equation. That, that is standard form of a line. Hopefully you remember that, that that's ax 
plus by equals c. I definitely want you to remember that. That is such a key algebra one linear type of concept that I want you to remember. You'll see it again on your algebra state test. That's why I keep emphasizing that. Okay, so let's take a look. I do something called the cover-up method. Let me write, rewrite this out so you can see it bigger. And this is what I do. When I'm trying to find the x-intercept, I'm looking for the x, I cover up the y. What equation do you see there? If you are thinking, oh, I see 3x equals 12, you're exactly right. So what you're going to do is you're going to divide each side by 3, and that means your x-intercept is 4, or in other words, 4, 0. Because the cover-up method, what you're doing essentially is you're plugging in 0 for the y, which zeroes it out. Doesn't matter what you multiply 0 to um, if you're always going to get 0. And so it just totally nullifies. It gets it out of your way. It's not there anymore. All right, now we're going to redo it again. Let me rewrite the equation over here. Oh, that should be negative 2y equals 12. And this time, I want to find the y-intercept. So I'm going to do the cover-up method. I'm going to cover up the x because I'm looking for the y. And if you see the equation, negative 2y equals 12, you're exactly right. What I essentially did was I zeroed out the x. I plugged in 0 for x. Of course, 0 times 3 is 0, and 0 minus 2y is negative 2y. So that's essentially what I'm doing. And then I'm going to divide each side by negative 2, and y is negative 6. So the name of this point is going to be 0, negative 6. That's my x-intercept, and that's my y-intercept. Now, if we need to see another example of this in class tomorrow, let me know, and I will be glad to show you another one um, where I do the cover-up method. I don't do as much writing. I don't. I don't mark out stuff like I did. I was just marking it out so you could see it on your notes. Okay, we're going to stop right here. Why don't you flip back to, let's go back, let's see, go back one. Go back to this page where a graph is given in your notes and try it on your own.